Hello again everyone. It's time for story time again and this time I'm reading the second part of chapter 10 from Alice in Wonderland, The Lobster Quadrille. And last time Alice was with the Mock Turtle and the Griffin and they were having a sing with her and explaining the dance that's called the Lobster Quadrille. And they were talking to her about lots of things that happen under the sea and she's very confused and doesn't understand. They now want her to explain about her adventures, so she's about to share her story with them. I could tell you my adventures, beginning from this morning, said Alice a little timidly, but it's no use going back to yesterday because I was a different person then. Explain all that, said the Mock Turtle. No, no, adventures first, said the Griffin in an impatient tone. Explanations take such a dreadful time. So Alice began telling them her adventures from the time when she saw the white rabbit. She was a little nervous about it just at first. The two creatures got so close to her, one on each side, and opened their eyes and mouths so very wide, but she gained courage as she went on. Her listeners were perfectly quiet until she got to the part about her repeating you are old, Father William, to the caterpillar, and the words all coming different. And then the mock turtle drew a long breath and said, It's very curious. It's all about as curious as it can be, said the griffin. It all came out different, the mock turtle repeated thoughtfully. I should like to hear her repeat something now. Tell her to begin. He looked at the griffin as if he thought it had some kind of authority over Alice. That means as if it's in charge of Alice. Stand up and repeat. Tis the voice of the sluggard, said the griffin. How the creatures order one about and make one repeat lessons, thought Alice. I might as well be at school at once. However, she got up and began to repeat it, but her head was so full of the lobster quadrille that she hardly knew what she was saying, and the words came out very strangely indeed. "'Tis the voice of the lobster I heard him declare. You have baked me too brown, I must sugar my hair. As a duck with its eyelids, so he with his nose trims his belt and his buttons and turns out his toes. When the sands are all dry, he's fun as a lark, but will talk in contemptuous tones of the shark. But when the tide rises and sharks are around, his voice has a timid and tremulous sound. That's different from what I used to say when I was a child, said the griffin. Well, I never heard it before, said the mock turtle. It sounds uncommon nonsense. Alice said nothing, and she'd sat down with her face in her hands, wondering if anything would ever happen in a natural way again. I should like to have it explained, said the Mock Turtle. She can't explain it, said the Griffin hastily. Go on, next verse. But what about his toes, the Mock Turtle persisted. How could he turn out his toes with his nose, you know? It's the first position in dance, Alice said, but was dreadfully puzzled by it all and longed to change the subject. Go on with the next verse, the griffin repeated. It begins with the words, I passed by his garden. Alice did not dare to disobey, though she felt sure it would all come wrong, and she went on in a trembling voice. I passed by his garden and marked with one eye how the owl and the panther were sharing a pie. The panther took pie crust and gravy and meat, while the owl had the dish as its share of the treat. When the pie was all finished, the owl, as a boon, was kindly permitted to pocket the spoon, while the panther received knife and fork with a growl, and concluded the banquet. What is the use of repeating all that stuff? the mock turtle interrupted. If you don't explain it as you go on, it's by far the most confusing thing I ever heard. Yes, I think you'd better leave off, said the griffin, and Alice was only too pleased to do so. Shall we try another figure of the lobster quadrille? The griffin went on. Or would you like the mock turtle to sing you a song? Oh, a song, please, if the mock turtle would be so kind, Alice replied, so eagerly that the griffin said in a rather offended tone, hmm, hmm, 
no accounting for her tastes. Sing her turtle soup, will you, old fellow? The mock turtle sighed deeply and began in a voice sometimes choked with sobs to sing this. Beautiful soup, so rich and green, waiting in a hot tureen. Who for such dainties would not stoop? Soup of the evening, beautiful soup. Soup of the evening, beautiful soup. Beautiful soup. Beautiful soup. Soup of the evening, beautiful, beautiful soup. Beautiful soup, who cares for fish, game or any other dish? <laughs> who would not give all else but to penny worth only a beautiful soup? Penny worth only a beautiful soup. Beautiful soup. Beautiful soup. Soup of the evening. Beautiful, beautiful soup. Chorus again, cried the griffin. And the mock turtle had just begun to repeat it when a cry of the trial's beginning was heard in the distance. Come on, cried the griffin, and taking Alice by the hand, it hurried off without waiting for the end of the song. What trial is this? Alice panted as she ran, but the griffin only answered, Come on, and ran the faster, while more and more faintly came, carried on the breeze that followed them, the melancholy words, And that's the end of chapter 10. What a very strange chapter. And the next chapter is called Who Stole the Tarts? And that's chapter 11. And we'll share that one next time. And it's not quite as confusing to listen to. So join me next time for chapter 11, Who Stole the Tarts? I hope you enjoyed that. See you next time. Bye bye for now.